people, I am Crystal Keys and welcome to Workplace Keys to Success, a channel that brings you an unfiltered, no-nonsense approach to surviving workplace bullying. Well, today we are going to talk about those enablers, clicks, wolf pack, flying monkeys, those useful goons, lackeys, and mobs. The spineless individuals that help the bully. But before we proceed, I want to remind you to subscribe and share your experience below kindly. Share your successful strategies. Let's help others overcome workplace bullying. Well, those enablers, clicks, wolf pack, flying monkeys, useful goons, lackeys, and mobs. Well, the term you've most often heard me use is wolf pack. So regarding workplace bullying, some researchers believe individuals behave like a pack of animals, which leads to the explanation of the psychological terror experienced by targets of bullying. Traits of a bully include anger, narcissism, maliciousness, aggression, the false perception of injustice, so that woe is me, bully, and the atmosphere of a wolf pack experience. Wolf pack behavior includes following the more aggressive dominant leader and the dominant recruitment of others to aid in bullying the less powerful member, that target. Some organization uh, structures are predatory, promoting wolf pack actions in an atmosphere. Well, figuratively and literally speaking, wolf pups have a mortality rate of 30 to 60 percent. And I'm giving you this information to give you a really good idea of the wolf pack. Malnutrition and starvation are common reasons for this high percentage. Did you know that wolf pups are born blind and deaf? And that only the alpha male and alpha female breed in the pack? A pack size ranges from three to 20 wolves. And the dominant male and the dominant female eat first. Well, just like the workplace bullying scenario, the social structure of the actual wolf pack changes from year to year. Wolves in the pack can move up or down in the pecking order or hierarchy. Does that sound familiar? When they lose, um, they also go on their own. And if they're low on the pecking order, they also go on their own. These uncivil partnerships empower the choices of unstable structures, covert workplace bullying, and offenders' security and advancement within the organization. I believe that helping foster social civility, organizations and individuals have to care and support one another. The lack of specific anti-bullying laws does not help the cause against bullying and mobbing in the workplace. Well, mobbing is an extreme form of group bullying in which one or more employees covertly attack another. The goal is to ostracize, isolate, and eliminate the target. Offenders participate in character assassination, humiliation, the disruption of their place of blame, their criticized questionability toward that target. Mobbing and bullying form a phenomenon that engages a process designed to dehumanize others, anchored in hate and the denial of individual human needs, what we need as individuals. Bullies within an organization use toxic enablers known as flying monkeys to further bully the target in workplace bullying. These bullies recruit useful goons to execute misconduct and incivility towards the target. Flying monkeys, this term, comes from the narcissistic bullet, the Wicked Witch of the West from the 1939 film 
the Wizard of Oz. So this is Miss Eveline herself. The flying monkeys hovered around the witch, helping to isolate Dorothy, the target, and her friends to victimize them. Well, a famous researcher, Steins, believes that narcissists procure flying monkeys who side with them, join their team, and set out to participate in a smear campaign and other damaging plans to destroy the lives of a target. The main goal is to gain support of the bully, make up the lies, portray the other person as evil and the actual bully. In popular psychology, a flying monkey is someone who does the narcissistic's bidding to inflict additional torment to the narcissist's target. The majority of research conducted on workplace bullying or mobbing focuses on the target or the bully. However, witnesses and bystanders are part of the issue if not for just the lack of contribution, doing nothing at all. They accordingly can participate in the resolution. A positive resolution requires a witness to respond more empathetically to victims, displaying the emotional coping mechanisms as opposed to the target showing emotional avoidance. Either way, that empathy is needed. Whether it is the bystander or the enlisted lackey, workplace bullying affects not only the target, but also the witness to workplace bullying. 21% of individuals witness workplace bullying, with a total indication of approximately half the U.S. workforce impacted by workplace bullying. Subsequently, 63% of the reported cases that witness workplace bullying increased to 82%. 82%. Workplace bullying can have multiple targets instigated by the bully. They also involve the audience, those who witness or watch the occurrence of bullying. An important new strategy for anti-workplace bullying focuses on the powerful role of the audience, that bystander. Well, depending on how the audience responds, there can either contribute to the problem or the resolution or the solution. The, the audience rarely plays a completely neutral role, although they may think they do. Well, some choose to instigate um, the bully by urging. Some encourage the bullying with cheering and laughing and uncivil comments that adds backing for that bully, the stage. Some participate in bullying once it starts and some passively consent to bullying by watching and the lack of action. At some point in our lives, we have fallen in one of these categories as an audience to bullying. A passive audience provides the stage a bully needs to continue their misconduct. A significant way to deal with bullies is for the bystander not to enable or support that bully. Some play a powerful role in the prevention of workplace bullying. That's needed. Some openly intercede with the discouragement of the bully's actions, defending the target and diffusing the occurrence with redirection. Some seek help from others to stop bullying or by reporting workplace bullying as the witness. Individuals who do not intercede or report workplace bullying often incur negative impacts too. Why don't witnesses intercede? with workplace bullying? Well, some believe this is not my concern. Some feel powerless to stop the bullying. Some fear of becoming the next target of retribution. Some of us feel that the target is justly bullied. Some believe that their lack of knowledge is withholding them from interceding. But I want to hear from you. If you would please 
Take the survey below and tune in next week for our survey results and discussion on how to respond to workplace bullying as the witness. We cannot just sit back and look. Stay connected by subscribing. Thank you for tuning in and have a great work week.